Hey guys, welcome to the Bayou Country Music Association show. This is Jacob. I'm here with Brian Frazier, Nashville singer songwriter. How are you doing, Brian? I'm doing great. How you doing? Oh man, I'm doing good. Doing good. Uh, I was had a, a really good time talking with you uh, whenever I first met you a while back, and we've been knowing each other for a few months. And uh, I, I had the opportunity when you said you had opportunity to do an interview. I was like, man, that's awesome. And especially with you, uh, you got some new stuff coming out, and uh, and we want to promote that for you, brother. But let's get into okay. it and uh, and let everybody know we, where you're from originally. I know you're from not Nashville. You live there. But. <laughs> Yeah, not, not from Nashville originally, like most people. Uh, I'm from uh, the mountains of uh, northwestern Virginia. It's called Winchester, Virginia. It's a small little mountain town up there in the Blue Ridge. And uh, it's actually Patsy Klein's hometown. It's a random little fact where I'm from. And, uh, yeah, I've been down in Nashville since about December 2014. It's been a few years. and Just been grinding ever since, you know. Awesome. And at, yeah. at what age did you like begin to play music or, or start to love music country music or, or playing and writing i always grew up kind of around it my parents would take me to the fairs i said my, my first concert was actually alabama i was like wow four or five i know i didn't even know what i was seeing but i came away being like i want to be doing that and and then i say i really got into it around 12 or 13 when the song started to really hit me you just you kind of got you like hit your heart you're start feeling some of that stuff that country music does to you and then i dove right in uh started learning guitar i learned guitar pretty much off the internet it's just i would come home from school look at tabs and stuff different random kenny chesney songs and anything you would want to you know jam around the campfire with and it all kind of blossomed from there i think i started writing songs probably like 15 or 16 they weren't not the greatest but they're funny to look back on now so but that's kind of how I got into it, and then kind of through college and that whole thing, it just got kind of more and more and more to where I was like, well, maybe this needs to be the career I, I'm doing. And I moved down here after college and haven't looked back since. It's been the greatest decision I've ever made. I, I wouldn't trade the world for it. I believe God kind of put me here to do that. I don't think I don't think I could do much else, honestly. <laughs> I hear you, brother. And what was some of your uh, some of your musical influences growing up? Obviously, you said Alabama was was one of your first concerts and listening. Uh, all types, though. I grew up kind of. See, I grew up in the weird. Uh, I'm 28, so I grew up in the stage where the honestly, I hate to say it, the file sharing age with the Napster and the Casa and the and when iPods were coming out. So like, you could get <laughs> and and when iTunes downloads came to be, I, I grew up with everything. I mean, three doors down to. Tupac to a, a lot of country though southern rock I had a phase where I, I mean I was I could play every Skinner song I went to three different Skinner concerts to what else uh, even some pop even though I, I mean I don't really write that much pop but I love I'll, I'll say it, guilty confession I love the Backstreet Boys still like it you, you can't you, if somebody tells you they don't and they you know they, they're lying yeah. to you we right, all like, <laughs> come on I want it that way. That music video, that's ridiculous. That's Come hilarious. on, man. But, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, the classics, honestly, like Billy Ray. I have There's a video my parents have when I'm, like, about five years old. I'm in Cowboy Beats dancing to Aki Breaky Heart. I say that's, like, the thing. That, I mean, the basis still is some real 90s country, like everybody else. We grew up in, like, I, I still feel like 90s country is the golden era of country music for our generation. And oh, definitely. Grew up, grew up right in the middle of that, so that, that's the biggest factor, but... From music now, a lot. I'd say it's a, it's that '90s country mixed with some rock because uh, I do like some rock in there, some some southern yeah, rock. You know? Yeah, definitely. So you said you moved to Nashville out of college. It was 2014. Yeah, it was a uh, December 2014. I actually I graduated in 2013 and took a year. And uh, I mean, I was playing a lot of shows, and it was kind of getting to that point where it was like, well, where are you going to do this full time and just dive right in, or are you going to kind of pick the pick the nine to five i graduated with a business degree from west virginia and it was kind of tip town and i'm glad i picked the other route and most people probably would have picked the same route not to come down here write songs all week but uh yeah then i came down here and uh just started meeting people it's kind of rough i didn't know one down here when i first moved here so for six months you kind of just going out to bars talking to whoever trying to play rounds and 
and it slowly kind of blossoms into a lot of cool relationships that you just never thought would happen. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it has to be, you know, an experience of, you know, uh, you come from West Virginia, up north, uh, mm-hmm. Yankee, I'm going to say. <laughs> but, <laughs> you guys. Yeah, but we have a lot of very talented artists down here, and, and yeah. you know, but even even them, whenever they say that, you know, you go to Nashville and there is a million people that are just as good mm-hmm. and better than you that are fighting to pay to get ten dollars to buy you know uh, i talked to uh guy Riggin and he said he was in nashville and he you know was eating ice for supper for uh, six months so yeah. it, it, explain like what is the uh the i guess the point where you actually made climb the hill of going from eating ice say to actually okay i can sustain myself as a musician up through here yeah i mean um see move to the house the whole like eating pb and j sleep on the couch um that whole thing, you kind of just start, I mean, you don't get paid really to play any of the riders rounds or anything in town, so you, I mean, you're just doing that, so you just got to pick up, and you got to be available in the day, because that's where the writing is, you, I mean, if you want to start co-writing in Nashville, you just have to have some odd jobs, so I started working, I worked at the Rhyme and Gift Shop for a little while, that's, that's a, you know, everyone has their random jobs, I did like kind of Uber Lyft too. At the Rhyme and Auditor? At the Rhyme and Auditor? Yeah, I, wow. I Worked in a gift shop selling uh, magnets and stuff to tourists. Wow. The first, like, kind of eight months kind of hold me over, and they were pretty cool to where they'd let me kind of have my own schedule when I needed to. So that got me on my feet in Nashville and uh, still got to kind of see the uh, the back of the Ryman and really get the history of that. So it's a funny little backstory, and got to always randomly stick my head in the Opry shows and stuff there. And they kind of held me over to where I could – get get enough going and uh you know get some shows and you start getting out of town where you can make some money on the road and such and that can hold you over and that's kind of where we're at now playing trying to play as much shows as possible on the road you know just road dog it and during the week just write write as much as possible as a uh, trying to get a cut yeah man <laughs> and <laughs> doing all all the obviously songwriting and uh mm-hmm. it is you've obviously wrote i'm sure many songs for that musicians have picked up and is there ever or, or that one artist you could say that you would love to either do a collaboration vocally or songwriting with this is probably pretty popular but i mean it's one of my biggest reasons and he, who uh, influences me the most probably that i forgot to actually mention earlier is eric church i mean uh, I, I, that's like and the, ding, 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 we have a winner. Thing, thing, thing. No, ding, thing, ding, ding, ding. If you don't come on this show and mention Eric Church, you, you don't <laughs> get not published. A songwriter, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I know that's the craziest one. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I would freak out. That, that's not, you know, we, we make friends with a lot of these bigger people, and then you kind of just, you see that they're real people. They're not just, like, stars. You're, you're in Nashville, so they're normal, too. They're just like us. But that's one that's the one guy where I was kind of like, Oof, man, I'd love to get in a room with him. Well, yeah, but uh, we'll yeah. see. Hey, you, know, you never know. Hey, yep, you know. And then when you do get in that room with him, make sure and call me so I can come because I'll be, right. I'll be hey, fanboying boy. on the outside. <laughs> For yeah, sure. Eric's one of my. Uh, I've always loved Eric Church and uh, how he has. He's very true, and he does a lot. You know, awesome songwriter, and he he writes country music that that speaks from the heart. You know, and yeah. uh, I think one of my most memorable things is is the show he did on the grand Ole opry after the uh, vegas uh tragedy and oh. how mm-hmm. that that video right there if you can watch that and not feel something inside something's wrong with you you know yeah the why me or yeah why, why, not, why not me why not yep it, why it, not yeah. me and he said mm-hmm. you know uh you know he's like those are my people my crowd and it's just that that's 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 what it's all about man and that's what makes music and country and all johnny really of songwriting that that coming from the heart and uh I yeah. got, I, one weird thing uh, it's kind of got me into where i was like i want to perform i always wanted to songwrite but really like i got to see him on the year he got kicked off the rascal flats tour he got kicked off for kind of going around being, stage too much yeah, and all being stuff. eric and, church <laughs> yeah so he got kind of regulated like like relegated to these rock clubs and I got to see him at this small DC rock club that was kind of an hour away from me where I grew up. And it was the coolest. You were just like, this guy has it. It was it. And you got to see him at his like 
weird like stage where it was just coming up and it was i mean he just got kicked off the tour you just felt like it was real so he's it was not, like, to me, something like that yeah he's a modern day Waylon and, and johnny cash and outlaw that really don't yeah. give a damn about what they say he's gonna do it you know that, that's for sure awesome man but uh yeah he's 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 definitely one of my favorites and and if you ever do write a song with him you let me know <laughs> Let you know, you can be a fly on the wall. Yeah. Well, <laughs> speaking of songs, man, I mean, mm-hmm. obviously you, you're a writer, but you're also a good, a great artist, and and you have an EP that has out, been out on iTunes, Spotify, and all yeah. that, and mm-hmm. that's uh, lived it up, or lived it. I'm it's sorry, called, lived. It's, called, it's called lived it. Yeah, I, I released that about it'll be a year ago in May. Yeah, so that was a five song EP, kind of. That kind of was the, the songs I've, I've written from uh, kind of the start when I moved to Nashville with a few friends, kind of co-writing. I released an EP about three years ago that was just solely my stuff kind of back in Virginia. But uh, Lived It kind of was the Nashville yeah. introduction to me. And, uh, and, and it's done pretty well. There's a, the, the Keys song kind of made a little ways people people really had some good times of that and of course the beer pressure Classic. video and <laughs> such where we just were acting ridiculous and i had the kenny kenny powers mullet on that's come a little fan favorite at shows and such just a little party song but uh and, and now you have just released a new uh single it could have been you yeah yeah I'm, I'm pumped about that one it's called it could have been you uh, i wrote it with uh two really really good buddies and amazing artists songwriters themselves dawson edwards and uh, ryan nelson and um we wrote that probably september and it just i'm telling you it's one of those things when you know it you know it it came out in like an hour and a half and yeah i was just like i was just like i'm i'm cutting that for sure that's gonna be a cool summer jam and uh yeah i'm proud of it it's, it's uh it seems like it's going well it's got on some couple playlists and such and uh just hope everyone checks it out it's a good little summertime jam roll your windows down i'm a fan of those you know as much as i'm a fan of the deep stuff that actually is real you know meaningful per se but i love the the stuff that you can just roll your windows down and jam to you know yeah and i, I i've listened to the song several times the last few days and I, I love it and i'll make sure and uh you know publish uh, links to it and, and we obviously have uh, our Spotify top 25 and your song uh, has been on there uh, Beer Pressure's been on there oh, yeah. a little bit I appreciate and, uh, it too always appreciate it I, uh, I wanted to let you know I, I do uh, Bayou's Best and I pick four songs of you know I try to make mm-hmm. it new songs and of each week and and, and I I'm going to add that on, on this week's uh, uh, Bayou's Best well, no, thank you man that means a lot yeah, yeah, appreciate it thanks. great song man and uh I, I I had to to laugh a little bit. I, I recently, uh, it, last week, the song "Stereotype" was on there, uh-huh. and yeah. when I first I heard the song a while back, and I was like, "Man, I've heard this song before." So <laughs> for the listeners, I I met you through Dawson and Caleb and playing at a little a little hole in the wall down here in Louisiana, and and about six months ago, probably a little longer than that, and we've been in contact uh-huh. and talked and. Uh, I was like, I've heard that song, and I went through my phone, and I have videos of you and Dawson singing that song, and I was like, I knew I heard that song before, but tell us a little bit about that. Uh, I did an interview with Dawson, and uh, he had explained a little bit about how you and him had helped co-write that and stereotype. Yeah. It's a funny story. Also, just uh, before I get into that, I love that's why I love songwriting. Cause it's like you get these cuts on other people's albums that are your good friends, and then you could be on the road and playing them, and people are like, wait a minute. I know that. that. Yeah. yeah, that's the coolest thing to me about national songwriting is that. But uh, yeah, how that song came about was uh, I'm good friends with Joe, Joe Fortner, and uh, yeah, he's an amazing artist too. And uh, we had a, a write together, and uh, it was just supposed to be uh, him and I. And Dawson's a good friend of mine. We write great songs together. And I kind of just hit Dawson up and was like, like we do, we ran and we'd be like, hey man, you want to join in? And he, at the time, he was like, yeah, I'd love to, but uh, I'm writing with a uh, good friend of ours named alex and i was like well heck bring them both in um so we do that we show up to the right and then another good co-writer just was gotten out of another writing room in the building that we were at on music row and he popped in his name's bobby mcclam and so we ended up having all these guys in the room i mean it's about that's five people which is a crazy thing to co-write i'd never hardly do it you never probably have any success usually but they were all good friends so that we kind of were just like, all right. So it started with me, and then it just blossomed into this crew. And uh, 
it, that that's another song where uh, Joe kind of brought the title in, and I was just like, well, that's tight. Let's go with that, man. And uh, I'd say, even though it was five way, every single person had a big part to do with that song. Um, um, it, and uh, it came out perfect. Joe sang the, the heck out of it. Um, yeah, he really did. It's, did it's a great a jam. Job. Um, yeah, I, I mean, that's one of my favorites off the record. I mean, he's got some good ones on there, too, like Georgia and stuff. But I'm proud of that song. I'm glad glad it's gotten into people's ears. And, and uh, it's just funny how things work out because who knows what would have happened if I didn't call. I don't know. The co-writing thing is just the – it's the songwriting gods hit it at the right moment. Sometimes. Exactly. So you never know. It's, and I'm, I'm glad you like it. People check it out. Yeah. Uh, I know yeah, it, out there. It's also on our, uh, yeah. on our, it's, it was on the uh, Bayou's Best last week, but it's going to make its way and, and move on over to the top 25. And, and Joe, awesome, Joe's, man. uh, Joe's definitely a great musician. We love his music and songs and hopefully get a chance to do a little interview with him. I know he's been busy on the road. And, oh, uh, sure. Yeah. But yeah, man, we uh we're digging a new single, and and are you going? Are you on tour or playing any shows promoting it right now? Or I know you. Oh uh, always... yeah, um, I'm gonna be this summer. I'll probably be out. I'm doing a lot of uh, kind of back up north where you guys think is north, which is funny to me. I'll be back in Virginia and West Virginia a lot of uh, June and July. I'm playing um kind of a Fourth of July festival and then a couple bars and such. Um, in May, in a few weeks, I'll um, be playing the Key West Songwriters Festival. It's more of a writer's round thing. And uh, I'm playing the Bluebird in a few weeks, too. The Bluebird. I've, I've, yeah, I've heard of yeah. that. Where's, uh, I think my buddy James Dupre plays there quite often. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's basically the mother church of songwriting. It's okay. probably it's only the only place I get nervous at anymore. I played there about four times before now, and... I tell you, man, you go in there and you look at the walls and you see the greatness and everyone that's been in this tiny little room in a strip mall yeah. on Hillsboro in Nashville and you still just are like in awe. I, I, I mean, it, it's amazing. So I, I try to play as much as I can there just to honor the greats and, you know, it, it, it doesn't get any better. So check it out when you're in town. If you're ever in town, definitely come to the Blue Bar and see some good songwriting. Well, I was going to ask you, brother, um, I'm probably going to be in town in the end of May. They have mm-hmm. at Alley Taps with the Iceman, and I know Dawson's going to be there, and they have oh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. a little, uh, a, a few guys from local guys uh, with uh, uh, music group Red Bar Music. It's going to be Dawson. Are you going to be part of that show too, right? I- I am actually part of that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's the showcase. It's going to be, um, yeah, gonna be you, cool. Uh, is Caleb, Caleb Conrad is going to be, I think should be playing it. Uh, uh, yeah, the whole crew, kind of our little songwriting circle from Nashville will be lo- playing it. Um, yeah, local yeah, play for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'll get the, the, the Louisiana guys up here and kind of mingle. And yeah, bro. It'll be fun to kind of share our songs. I love that. I, I love all types of music, so get it all together there. And I, yeah, that'll be fun. If you're in Nashville, anybody out there, uh, it's at the uh, 29th, I believe. Uh, yeah, 20, yeah. I'll have to double check. I mm-hmm. want to say it's, it's a Thursday. I know that. Yeah. Uh, Come on out, Alley Taps, downtown, Prairie's oh, yeah. Alley. going to be a good one. Yes, yeah, sir. And uh, I didn't mean to cut you off about your yeah. shows and stuff. Uh, upcoming, beyond that, you have anything? I, I laugh because you say that uh, I think North is – Man, I'm from Southern Louisiana. North to me, <laughs> Arkansas is north for me. All right, I know, it's but funny, uh, I you got any <laughs> shows south that you're gonna be playing anytime uh, soon? Um, uh, not as south as you all. I think we're working on some Louisiana stuff though to get back down with you guys because uh, I really love that that little run we did uh, and uh, it was awesome. We got to play Rax Bar and a couple other things, and I think we're gonna get back down there try to play the uh, the Cowboys and such and some yeah. of those good venues that are that that have, that have that. That good Louisiana country crowd. I, I really dig what y'all bring to the shows down there, and uh, can't get enough. Love spreading country music, and y'all are definitely an area that that it's definitely a place where real. if you're gonna be playing and you don't be playing any '90s country type stuff, you can get run out quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. They're real. You're, you're, I like judgmental crowds because they they feed back, and they, hey, I I love earning earning the uh, the merit of y'all. So. When I'm down there, it, it's great. They dig us, so we'll be back soon. Oh, uh, and I think 
maybe something in June, but I'll, I'll be more in contact with y'all. We'll try to figure something out, get a little promo going. But yeah, um, and yeah. and for people to keep up with all of your uh, shows and stuff, uh, you post most of that on your social media pages or your website, or I mean, yeah, yeah, I post everything. Uh, of course, Facebook. Uh, it's Brian Fraser Music. It's uh, and then the Instagram's kind of the biggest thing I've been working. We do a lot. I post most of my stuff on there, but it goes to Facebook too. And my Instagram handle, it's a Brian Fraser Tunes, and it's a B R Y A N, and that Fraser with a F R A Z I E R. A little different spelling for you. And then it's Brian Fraser Tunes. So check that out. I got some, uh, it's not just music. I like to kind of keep my Instagram a little, a little different. We, we get all types of stuff. You'll see the Nashville life of a singer songwriter so yeah i definitely follow we, we do it i'm a follower yeah. and i love i love watching because uh, like you said you, you get a little taste of of nashville life you know you yeah. guys singing songwriting or out listening to somebody that you know newcomers or you know mm-hmm. hey. yeah, it's such a close community here that's the biggest thing that's that's kind of uh, really what i love about nashville i think it makes it different than anywhere else we're all we're all best friends we're all rooting for each other and it's like it's just a good competition because any of our friends does well we do well too so it's like it's just kind of like it's a great great place i definitely love it so speaking of nashville uh being there now for coming up on four years now yeah oh yeah uh, what what is the best wow moment you could tell us if it was running into somebody that was like wow or maybe you know anything like that some kind of story you can give biggest wow see it's yeah i got a few i'll say this i i randomly when i uh, first I think it was the first year in, I randomly, like, my Google Maps took me some back neighborhood, and uh, I literally saw Eric Church just running. <laughs> like, like, and uh, I kind of freaked out. It came back to that whole... Man, that whole, I'm, like, starting oh to, I'm starting to get a, a, a bro love feeling here for right, Eric, brother. It is a little too strong. I know, it's a bro <laughs> love. But, hey, I didn't stop, because I don't, you know... I don't, I don't blame I don't you, brother. People uh, trying to do their workout, but I gave him a little wave, and kind of, that, that was funny. I would um, probably I'll stop. Say, Ran into uh, Chris Stapleton getting a uh, loaf of bread at Kroger, at the wow. local grocery store. That was kind of funny. But you see these people, and they're like I said, they're all they're normal individuals, and that's the cool thing about Nashville. There's nothing super like yeah, you see them as superstars on TV and everything. But these people live the norm. They shop at the same places we do. They they have kids. They go to the same oh, yeah. dentist. You know, it's like you start to see that they're. Normal, and that I think that's what's the difference between Nashville from New York and LA is like it's more just of like yeah they're nice people and, and the majority of them they'll talk to you they're again they're just normal people but uh, I, I always seem to run into a lot of people my girlfriend always brings that up she's like where how do you have the luck of just always run into people but <laughs> seem to that's the thing but yeah uh, it's not some bad not a bad luck obviously not a bad luck I know really? I like it it's funny <laughs> and well, how has being in Nashville helped you develop your songwriting or your performing or anything you know your your overall career in the past four years oh yeah it's uh i mean immensely um when, when i moved here I, i'd say i had a good base few, i mean two or three songs i would say would hold some weight here um but the songwriting i came here to be a songwriter first and then an artist second and and the songwriting just getting in the room with people that are just as good or better than you and then seeing writers rounds, you see the level that you need to be at and it's just it's the world's best level of songwriting and entertainment type of stuff and it just pushes you it it pushes you to a next level you being around good artists makes you better um you just you kind of see you see what it takes and there's there there literally is it's like the nfl of country music you it's and you can't really describe the talent level until you see it and it it, it really just makes you 10 times better by moving here it's the, that's the hard thing is you kind of understand it being because like, there's a lot of people like yeah you're great in a small town but you come here and it really does just push you to be better that's, yeah yeah and that's mm-hmm. that's something i mean i'm a huge fan of music and a lot of people don't or a lot of, uh, of the public doesn't, they see the big names behind this microphone, but it's, yeah. I'm a huge fan of the writers, man, because the lyrics and the, that's, that's really, if it wasn't for that, you know, and there's plenty of musicians that write their own stuff, but there's also a lot of songwriters that are brilliant songwriters that just strictly write songs. And, uh, I love, I love, love, love listening to great songwriting and, and lyrics and, and, uh, 
you know, obviously you you have your own music too as well that you're promoting. But uh, I just want to say thank you as as being part of that that group of family, man. Because if it wasn't for guys like you that sit around and, and write songs for other people as well as yourself, it, music wouldn't be what it is. Oh yeah, it, it is, like, and I appreciate it because it, it's hard uh, sometimes. Because I, I always say this, it, it might just be me. I can't trust a country songwriter if you don't miss your home. I'd rather be in the mountains of Virginia right now, but I'm here because there's nothing else I'd rather do. So, like, it is a hard thing to move, uproot your life, and I understand why some people just can't do it because you really are uprooting your entire life to chase a dream, what some call a dream of sorts, and what is making it, you know, just to write songs. And, and, uh, it is, it, it is difficult it, with the way the streaming and everything's worked out. It's not exactly the most profitable business off the bat. Um, so I appreciate that. And, but at the same time, Hey, I get to wake up with my friends and go write songs and, and you, 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 people like you get to hear them. And I'm glad, really glad y'all enjoy them because that that's honestly the most meaningful thing is, seeing my music touch someone getting getting instagram dms that are like man i went through that i've, I've been through that thank you man your, your song got me through this breakup your song exactly. i played it at my graduation party and we partied to it and like stuff like that 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 keeps that's you going. music man that that's true yeah. music is is from the from mm-hmm. from the heart from the movement and, and i just kind of yeah. had a little when you said uh, you miss being home i immediately thought of uh i'm a, I'm a big luke combs fan and uh, I don't know. I'm sure you've heard his song that he's. Oh, yeah. It's been out for a while, but he's just re- announced that he's going to put it on his uh, deluxe edition. And Houston, we have a problem. Houston got a problem, and it's yep. about you know he wrote the song uh-huh. about being in Texas and just it, that song when I first heard it a long time ago, and, and now it's out. It's like songs like that. You know, it, it's you can feel it. You can feel you know the the emotion behind it, and and obviously uh, all great songwriters and singers chris stapleton you mentioned that one of the great songwriter if, yeah. if, and emotion that comes out of his his music and lyrics and it's uh it's awesome man and it, it's a talent that that I, I i'm not blessed to have but i'm glad that i, I know people that do oh, thank you i know yeah it's a it's it's something else I know. it's a crazy skill just making up cool stories not all of them are made up though i'd say well, we start with an idea. I'd say a lot of my crazy, I, I, I grew up a little wild, had a lot of wild friends, and I think that helped me. I always have these stories I can pull out and write, so it kind of just develops into these funny or deep songs or whatever. It's uh, I've kind of lived a little bit, not to go back to that lived it album, but I have to where I have some wild stories always. So are you trying to tell me that so, beer pressure came out of the life experience? <laughs> no, I, Never. Well, I've had my fair share of some wild nights with some, you know, some Coors Light and some, some Camo man, Cam Bush Light in the backwoods of West Virginia, but yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, man. I, one, I'm going to say one more thing about the beer pressure. <laughs> I, not many people, I don't know, up north know that uh, in Louisiana they sell 10-ounce beer cans. And I did not know oh. until I ventured you know, other areas of the country <laughs> that it's not really the same case. And uh, in the song, whenever you say, you know, I uh, got sweat for 12-ounce cans... I had a buddy of mine that I was playing a song, and he's like, why does he buy 12 ounces? And I'm like, dude, do you not realize <laughs> that they don't sell 10-ounce cans everywhere in the world? But I just thought that was a funny little tidbit, man. It, it is a funny little difference from Louisiana, y'all. But y'all, have, I love your different stuff, the drive through uh, daiquiris. That's one thing, uh, just the same thing. You're like, wow, you guys don't have 10-ounce cans? We don't have drive through daiquiris. Oh, yeah, oh, wish, yeah. I wish we did, though. It's funny. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, a uh, you, when you're born in Louisiana and you go to another state, it's like going to another country. It's, it's sad. <laughs> it's like, what? Y'all don't, y'all don't have this? Y'all don't have, you know, a daiquiri mm-hmm. shop? Y'all don't have 10 ounce cans? Yeah. Y'all don't have some crawfish? Or, yeah. Tough, tough. Lo- uh, love my home state, man, but also love venturing out. Love, uh, I love Tennessee. It's a beautiful state. Oh, uh, I've never got sure. to go to West Virginia. Maybe one day hey, I'll be able to go with you. Yo, I'll have to invite you up. You'll have to come to the show. We get, it's, it's a different type of redneck, a little little mountain redneck up there. It's, it's, yeah. it's one of the most beautiful states you'll ever set foot in, and uh, it's got some craziness like it's built as. It's wild and wonderful, as they say. That's, that's kind of state name, and it for sure lives up to it. So, that's around, you'll have to come up. You'll have to come up. That's a moonshining area, huh? Oh, no, yeah, you dang right. Yeah, I got, I, I've, I've had my fair share. I actually just wrote a song the other 
other day. Kind of a lot. I write a lot of these other like Appalachian songs that really dig kind of background stuff. But uh, I've had a few friends. Can't tell you where exactly, but they still got some stills. <laughs> uh, little, little thing, the real deal. They're so, on the yeah, Discovery yeah. Channel, Moonshine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've definitely had my fair share of some good apple pie, I'll say that. So. I hear you, brother. <laughs> well, Brian, man, I appreciate you taking some time to talk with us, brother. And uh, I really, uh, really enjoyed it, bro. And I um, uh, tell everybody, you know, go out and look up the new, uh, the new single. And I'll be sure and and post it up and it'll be on our uh, body's best and uh you know look up all brian's social medias and keep up with him he, he's a pretty good guy and uh also oh, uh you. like to give a little shout out to our sponsors uh cowboys arena and cowboys nightclub and scott a uh, great venue for a lot of uh musicians and uh tonight friday this friday night which is currently now they have mr jamie badger on the kicking cajuns and Tomorrow, Saturday, Mr. Blaine Roy will be playing. And uh, go uh, give them a, a, a follow and go on their website and look up more dates. They got a lot of great artists to go around. Uh, hopefully, Brian will be playing there soon. Uh, yeah, hopefully, yeah. We'll see what we can do. Yes, Definitely sir. Definitely want to get back down there. Yes, sir. Well, Brian, appreciate it, brother.